Jah, in you do I put my trust. Save I from all them that persecute I and deliver I, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces, while there is none to deliver. O Jah, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with I, let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay my honor in the dust. Selassie Rastafari. Giving thanks, Rastafari, reporting headline. Talking about Warburg Pincus today. That's a global private equity firm like the Carlisle Group or Blackstone. Recently, they purchased a company that's involved in, in tax software. I think it was about a $100 million purchase, so it wasn't a small deal. Obviously, they have patents on particular software. They can track and monitor transactions around the world. Of course, that's what they're concerned with because they are behind the Federal Reserve and other central banks. Um, it says they raised $11.2 billion last year for investments that include oil and gas explorations. It says it's already invested committed more than 9.5 billion over the over the last 40 40 so years. Of course this is more than 9.5 billion, so there could be 90 billion, could be 900 billion. Firms that investors in the energy fund include public and private pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, insurance companies, endowments, foundations, and wealthy individuals. So they basically take your money. If you work for the police department, your money goes into a pool, and people like Warbur Warbur Pincus come along, and they, they, they take somebody out to the strip club, and they manage to get that money for themselves. They take the management up front, cost up front, and they invest the rest, and of course, they take a certain percentage of what it earns. That also is insurance companies that they're investing. So if you give your money every month, like I do, three vehicles um, to the insurance companies plus the house, um, that money is also put into a fund, and then it, it companies like Warburg Pincus that use that money to invest. To, it's so-called make, make a return for the insurance company, but it's not guaranteed. Now, the trick is if it's a public company, you can, you can automatically assume it's going to be a loss because if a person owns the company, they're going to be concerned about how that company does. But if a million or two million people own the company and it's part of a, you know, a, a, one of their uh, 401ks and you know, the, the, some other company manages it, you know, they're not really keeping track. They're not really too concerned about how that company does on a day-to-day -day -day basis. So you can pinch those companies fairly easily without being detected. So Wilbert Pincus actually owns 16.88% uh, in MEG. MEG went public in 2010 on the Toronto Stock Exchange and it owns uh, Christina Lake Project and Sermont Project. As, other, as well as other prospective tar sands production and land lease holdings. MEG has a contract to send its tar sands through Enbridge's Keystone XL clone pipeline system, which has been the recent focus of a protest on the State Department over the permitting of a controversial border crossing northern leg of the pipeline system. If they say the Keystone XL clone is designed to accomplish the same goal as Trans Canada's Keystone XL, which is to bring Alberta tar sands to the Gulf Coast refineries. They say this Keystone XL clone did not go through the, through the normal State Department approval process. So they're, they're directly implicating this with John Scary, the U.S. head of Department of State. They say the maneuver has a key beneficiary, former Obama Administration Secretary of the Treasury, Timothy Geithner, who now serves as president of the private equity giant Warburg Pincus. A document posted on the U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission website confirms the contractual relationship between MEG and Enbridge. 
It began in December 2011, a month before President Joe Obama kicked the can down the road on making the decision on Kinks, Keystone XL's Northern Lake. So they pushed this through before Joe Obama, um, you know, decided to push the Keystone decision down the road. And how many people have heard of this?